In this lecture, we're going to briefly discuss Python and its advantages in an overview, and then we'll show you how to install Python onto your computer. Now, Python was developed in 1991 by Guido Van Rossum, and it's quickly become one of the most popular programming languages in the world. And this is because it has many advantages. The main advantages that Python has is that developers can learn it quickly, and this is because it typically involves a lot less code than other languages, and the syntax is a lot easier to read. And this is because, as you'll learn later on, is that Python makes use of white space. That is, it uses indentation instead of curly braces, and that allows users to really learn it a lot faster than they would other programming languages. And because of that, Python's now utilized by pretty much every major technology company in some capacity. And what's also really nice about Python is that there's a huge amount of additional open source libraries. Then that's basically to say, if you want to perform a particular task in Python, maybe you want to create PDFs in Python, send an email in Python, work with images, do data analysis, create a website, there's additional frameworks and libraries available to you that are open source that people have created that allow you to do those things. Python itself has a lot of stuff built in. It's known as a programming language that has batteries included, and that's because there's a lot of standard libraries that are included in Python that allow you to already do a lot of stuff. That is to say, for instance, it has a math library that has a lot of capability, but there are additional libraries in case you need to focus more on a particular niche topic, such as numerical computing. There's a library called NumPy for that. So to actually look at all these advantages and start learning Python, we need to install it. And we're going to install Python using the free Anaconda distribution. And the reason for that is that this distribution includes Python as well as many other useful libraries, including Jupyter, which is the notebook system we're going to be using throughout a lot of the course. Later on, we'll use things like text editors to write Python scripts. But when we first start learning, Jupyter is a great choice. Now, Anaconda, another reason we choose it is that it can be easily installed onto any major operating system, such as Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. One thing I do want to point out before we jump to the actual Anaconda download website is that because Anaconda includes a lot of these other libraries, there's also a miniature version of Anaconda, which is Miniconda, which is a lot smaller. So in case you don't have enough room on your computer for the full Anaconda installation, there's also Miniconda. And we'll be showing you how to work with that right after we show you the main Anaconda setup. So it is recommended that you use the full Anaconda, but just in case you don't have a fast internet connection or you don't have enough space on your computer, you can always use Miniconda. So let's begin the installation process by going to www.anaconda.com slash downloads. I'll see you there. So at anaconda.com slash download, the website will look something similar to this. It may be updated from time to time as far as the look and feel. But in general, it will have the download links for the various installers for the Windows, Mac OS, and Linux systems. And if you click on one of these, you'll be brought down to the actual download links for the graphical installers or the command line installers. By the time you view this page, it's most likely that 3.7 or 3.8 or even 3.9 has been released. So keep that in mind. Any version of Python 3 should be fine for our use cases. Now, if you're on Windows, you'll go ahead and download the graphical installer, 64-bit or 32-bit, depending on your computer. Most newer computers are gonna be 64-bit. And if you have any questions on that, you can click to learn more. But basically, this is just a graphical installer. It's a wizard that's gonna walk you step-by-step step on the installation process. So for Windows users, click on this graphical installer, download it. If you're on Mac OS, click on this graphical installer and download it. And then if you're on Linux, you'll be clicking on this installer and downloading it. Keep in mind that Linux users have a command line installer and you'll have to type commands that we'll show you in just a second. Once you've decided which version you're going to download, scroll down a little bit and click here where it says how to install Anaconda. And depending on what operating system you're currently on, it will take you to one of these three pages. Here you can see installing on Windows and it has step-by-step -step instructions for installing. The graphical installers are really quite straightforward. You just select the defaults, hit next, and follow along with these step-by-step -step instructions. You don't need to worry about number two as far as verifying the data integrity. If you're on Mac OS, it's basically the same thing. If you click on that link on how to install, it will guide you through the graphical installation process for Mac OS. Again, step-by-step -step process, pretty straightforward. Just hit continue on all the screens. If you're on Linux, it's going to be slightly different. What you need to do is you'll be downloading 
a .sh file, and then at your command line or terminal, you'll be running this following command, bash, and then right here, down tilde, downloads, Anaconda 3, and then whatever version you happen to be clicking on. Basically just copy and paste this command into your terminal. A quick note for Windows users, and this is a pretty important one, you'll eventually have a screen that looks like this saying advanced installation options, and you can choose whether or not you want to add Anaconda to your path environment variable. Anaconda themselves recommends to not add Anaconda as a path environment variable, since this can interfere with other software. Typically what it's going to interfere with is previous downloads of Python. However, since this is probably your first download of Python, we actually highly recommend that you do add Anaconda to your path environment variable. This will allow you to call Conda specific commands directly at your command line. Again, for Windows users, we do recommend that you add Anaconda to your path environment variable. When you click on it, you'll notice that it says not recommended, it'll highlight in red. Go ahead and click on it anyways, and then hit install. Now, as we previously mentioned, these graphical installation files include Anaconda, Python, and many other libraries in this distribution. So you'll notice that it's actually quite a large file. It's about half a gigabyte. Depending on your internet connection or the space available on your computer, you may not want to actually download and install all these libraries. Instead, you probably just want the basics of Python. For that use case, you can look for conda.io slash miniconda-html or just Google search for miniconda and it will take you to the miniconda links for the installers. And it's basically the exact same thing except it's a much smaller file and it doesn't include a variety of the libraries which you don't really need to worry about. So there's one for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So if you're interested in a much smaller file download, you can use those installers as well. However, we do recommend that if you have the bandwidth and the space that you just download the full Anaconda installation. Once you've successfully downloaded and gone through the installation steps for Anaconda, you should be able to search your computer for Anaconda Navigator. This is a desktop app that allows you to quickly launch Jupyter Notebooks. So go ahead and confirm your installation by clicking on Anaconda Navigator. It will load up and eventually you'll see something that looks like this with little quick dashboards that allow you to launch different development environments. There's the Jupyter Notebook, our main development environment. There's the Qt console, Spider, another integrated development environment. There's also other things like GlueViz, Jupyter Lab, and even RStudio. If you decide to later on learn R, you can install that as well, just a click of a button. But we're going to be using the Anaconda Navigator to quickly launch Jupyter Notebooks. So now that we have Anaconda and Python installed on your computer, you should be able to open up the Anaconda Navigator. Up next, we'll discuss how to actually run Python code, either as a script at the command line or using the Jupyter Notebook.